Where else does anybody cook steaks like this on a dark evening? Got to be November 14th, night before opening day. Got to be Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Where the deer camp up here around Clare? Got to be in Mike's old ranch. Yeah, the Mike's old ranch <laughs> up here at Clare. And John, you looks like you're doing a fantastic job on well, these I'm steaks. Well, I'm trying. I'm now, trying. We have a lot of fellas here at deer camp to feed. What are there about a? It's a good bunch. Good bunch, good maybe bunch. Uh, 15 decent, people I think up here this 15. year. And you know the amazing thing, these 15, most of them are in there playing poker right now, having one heck of a time, really unwinding. There's people washing dishes, preparing food. Yeah. No, no, I should hear something. We'll get some bowls. Okay. Oh, that's good. And I ain't talking just for the camera. That's good stuff. There's uh, beds all over the place, couches. There's room on the floor. How many are we going to shoot tomorrow? Oh, that's a question we're going to debate far into the night, but it's the evening before opening day. Now, I'm here with yep. Zach, my son Zach. He's going to get his first deer tomorrow, hopefully. Good. Bob Garner is up in the Upper Peninsula in some of the hottest deer country in the state. Ed Groves and Kathy Beitler are in southern Michigan. We're going to report to you all about opening day of deer season, so hang on. It's Thursday night. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged... Opening morning, 1984, northern lower peninsula, Mickey McSell's place. You know, this morning, it was kind of quiet. It wasn't windy like it was now. What was it like uh, in your blind? Well, the deer weren't moving too well this morning, Fred. We saw, I saw two before 8 o'clock, and that was all. Well, the conditions, you know, I thought it would be different than last year. Remember, it was snowing and, yeah. and wet and just about freezing. Well, it was warmer today, but it did about the same thing, although we didn't get that much precipitation up here. You guys got deer. That's why they're in camp right now <laughs> at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Big yeah. ones? No, we got a spike horse, both of us. Both of you? Yeah. Nice little spike. Well, you know, we came up here, and I was hoping, like heck, that Zach could get his first deer. Heck of a thing, you know? So what, we. Well, that's the way it goes. Let's go back here and look at the deer. In fact, come on, come on over here, guys. Uh, I want to show you right there. What Zach got? Hey, How about hey. that? He did it. Huh? Good. <laughs> Obvious. Must weigh 200 pounds. Zach and I set this oh, one up because they didn't know. We told That's them. Great. What the size of that thing? I was yeah. depressed about him not getting a deer. Boy, I know is it. That a nice rack? Well, I tell you, you talk about a proud oh, father. Deer, huh? Come on, Zach, get in there and hold that. Mackerel. That is a seven point. You can count them up. Look at the palmated rack oh, on there. Looks like an elf. Come on over here, Mickey. Son of what do you think about that? Isn't that exciting? Oh, that's great. That's great. That's one of those unusual deers that we find, deer we find up here with those flat antlers like that. Yeah. I know, with the palmated antlers, Zach. First deer, Zach? Yep. Congratulations. First deer, I tell you. Find a club. <laughs> I could, we had this planned out to set you guys up, whoever was back at camp, to reveal this deer. Tell them the story, how it happened. Well, I was uh, kind of resting in the blind there. Uh, he wanted to have a nap at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. tired. He nudged me and... Was uh, a little more excited than I was about it. You were jumping all over the place. I had to stay steady. And I get I get keyed up just talking about it, but my heart was just going like this. And, <laughs> and I'm trying to tell him to squeeze the trigger, calm down. And he's just saying, Dad, Dad, you know, cool it. And, and, stepped out behind that tree. Now, hold it. Smoke said that he had the picture book shot 80 yards. 80 yards, broadside, walking slow. What would you have? About 25 yards, dead stop. <laughs> took, <laughs> took about a half a step and fell over. That was it. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful. The, you know, the way Dad likes to see it, yeah. the way all of us like to do it, it just went right down, clean kill, right in the heart. You I got tell it figured you. out how you're going to mount it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got that all talked about, yeah, the mount. Tell us the truth. Who gutted it? Oh, well, I, he, I, I was showing him. Showing me how to showing do it. I figure his first deer. The first one, you need some help. Oh, I tell good. you. That's, that's excellent. Good. Okay, but you guys got those deer back there in the buck pole. Two I don't spikes. Know if we want to show them now. You <laughs> all. After seeing this animal. <laughs> yeah, well, here it is. This is our report. Actually, how would you summarize the conditions, fellas, uh, for the northern lower from what we've had here? Oh, it was warm, and uh, at my blind, deer were moving. I saw a lot of deer. I saw 18 deer, and uh, but they were moving all day. They weren't just, uh, you know, staying tight at noon or anything like that. My deer was shot at 11.30, and Mike got his at 10.30. Yeah, yeah. And, and Zach's was at uh, 8 a.m. 
8 a.m. Well, I tell you, Bob Garner, who always likes to come up here turkey hunting uh, with us and have a good time, is up in the Upper Peninsula, and he is in a spot that has more deer than anywhere in the state. In fact, I guess we should pose the question, how many deer do you have by now, Bob? I've got one so far, Fred, but I'm trying to fill out the uh, second tag like a lot of hunters that are hunting in Area 215 in Menominee County. Mine isn't quite the bragging deer like Zach's is, and I want to say right now, congratulations, Zach, for a first buck. That is just absolutely fantastic. In fact, I wish I had one that size myself right now. Southern Menominee is the hub of the high deer population in the county. Deer are offered a veritable smorgasbord of agricultural products like corn, barley, and alfalfa hay, and they leave most of the deer in this area fat and sassy. The relatively short distance of the bedroom in the cedar swamp to the kitchen of the farm fields means that conditions are ideal for deer production. In fact, the deer population has exploded with the increased production of corn. There is a real fear that a long winter, much like the Arctic blasts of 78 and 79, might trap these deer out of the yards and decimate this otherwise healthy population. To counter this, the DNR has offered antlerless permit holders the option of taking a second deer if the first one is a baldy. A farmer, Nick Tony, has seen this population rise. To the deer population. When I was, uh, when, when I was growing up on this farm right here, uh, we never seen a deer on this farm. Uh, if we seen one set of tracks in the summertime, we were doing, uh, it was something. My dad used to come and get me to show me a track when I was small. <laughs> and even until I was, uh, well, in the, probably in the late 50s, there still was no deer here to speak of. And then all of a sudden we started with uh, cash crop and corn and, and raising a lot of corn, and that's when the deer came. And, I, and, and they're just about domesticated right now. They, they live right on the crops that we raise. Corn fed, here's a deer for Ripley's Believe It or Not. An eight-year-old doe in prime condition, just great shape, tipping the scales at 190 pounds. Now that's 100 pounds larger than most dressed does. Although the Stevenson Field Office was the place where hunters checked in their antlerless deer if they wanted to get a second tag, bucks like Harold Klotz were the ones that really attracted the crowds. Well, we've scored it out here, and it looks to me like it's about 27 points, which really doesn't get you into the big buck contest, but nevertheless, I suppose you're going to have this one mounted. Sure will. Have you seen this deer a lot before, or is this a, a, a deer that uh, just happened to come by your post? Just happened to come through, chasing a doe. Have you seen a lot of deer uh, already this season? Just a few. Just a few. When did you get him? Uh, yesterday at 4 o'clock. Now, that certainly is a, a deer that, I'll tell you what, he'd go right up in my living room. <laughs> While the official counts were being made at the Stevenson DNR office, the unofficial results were tabulated at an area restaurant. There was no shortage of hunters swapping yarns at any place that served hot coffee. Opening day was miserable with temperatures that rapidly dropped during the day. The cold rain and wind had a way of dampening spirits quickly and slowing deer movements to a crawl. Those who sat in comfortable blinds like me stayed. The stump setters hunted for coffee. In my blind, I kept thinking of Ed and Kathy hunting in warm southern Michigan. Oh, Ed and Kath, you're down in that super shotgun deer hunting country around Eaton County. And boy, am I going to be really surprised if you haven't gotten your deer yet. Well, Bob, we only have one word for you here. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> no deer. We hope you were, though, successful. We got on our blind about quarter to seven this morning. It was about 40, 45 degree. Hey, the sun's coming out here a little bit, but believe me, we didn't see any this morning. We saw... Rain and more rain. Yeah, it just poured rain here on and off all through the morning. We heard shots, oh, I'd say about uh, 10 after mm -hmm. 7. I, 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 would say that I, I would say that it was really clear and bright this morning about uh, 725 is when I really could see all the way across the... Right all the way across the cornfields, but I saw about eight deer, and uh, which I was really happy to see, keeps the morning, makes the morning go by real fast, but they were just too far away. Did you see anything? Nothing. But I heard one, but never came around to where I could see it. And your son Doug took a shot. Yeah, he did. At a buck, but well, no luck. That's your <laughs> young hunter, and he's, he has to give it a try here. But uh, today, was we, heard, we did hear a lot of shooting, although they didn't push the deer by us like we had hoped. And, uh, uh, but I'm sure, you know, weather like this certainly doesn't stop deer hunting uh, throughout Michigan on opening day.
And anyone taking a drive throughout southern Michigan on opening day can find hunters scattered throughout the farmlands. Small dots of orange tell you that the hunt is on. These hunters are familiar with the deer habitat in their own backyard, and they take full advantage of it. And as you make your drive, a familiar sight is a driveway full of cars where a gathering of hunters are looking at a successful hunter like Jeff Lobdell of Ionia and his eight-point taken in the farmland right near his home. But this year, an unexpectedly large number of hunters have headed north for their deer. At the deer check station in Alma, it was hard to find one single answer to the question of why these southern Michigan residents don't just hunt around home. Well, uh, what's wrong with the deer around Jackson area? Where, where did you get this deer? Up, up around Grayling. Uh-huh. So why didn't you stay around the farmland country? Oh, we just have a good trip up north. Uh-huh. Do you have any luck down in the southern Michigan area? Yeah. yeah I've you? gotten deer down there, too, yeah. Uh -huh. Do they ta that taste any better up north, or what? It's a nah, still the same. They're all the same, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. Which you where do you like hunting better, up north or uh, down in southern Michigan? Oh, I like the trips up north, but if I really want to serious about getting a deer, I'll go go down down south. We really don't go up for the deer. We just go up for, you know, this getaway. It's a little vacation. Uh -huh. We got a deer, we got, we got lucky. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. He says he grows bigger ones in Ingham County. They taste any different up north than they do down oh, south? Yeah, yes, definitely. How? It's a lot better. The acorn feds, pine needles compared to... Uh, Corn feds and all that. So you like you like the taste of northern Michigan deer better than you like the taste of southern Michigan that's deer. That's right. And that's why you go hunt north. Yeah. Well, matter of fact, I think the deer are a little bit tender down down south. Take it through. Uh huh. We yeah. just go up there to have a good time. We're ten of us. We get a deer occasionally too. All right. Do they taste any different up north than they do down south, or what? Well, I don't know. The southern deer probably taste better, but uh, who cares really? <laughs> well, a lot of hunters love those corn-fed southern Michigan deer, and I like hunting in the open spaces. I was in this blind here uh, on a fence row. I was pretty well protected over me with uh, vines and such to keep me out of the elements, the wind and the rain that blew and stormed through here this morning, hunting along the edges, along the fence rows. And as Fred has said many times, these are some great areas to hunt, especially if you know that the deer are going to be moving along these rows uh, from one feeding area to another. And I saw about eight deer in the woods you're looking at there, but again, they were clear across the field. And boy, as, as much as I kept thinking to myself, please come my way, please come my way, Kath, they just didn't. I, <laughs> that's so bad too, you know? It's really frustrating, but hey, that's the way it goes. I think we had a really good morning. The weather, the weather, even though it was rainy, wasn't really too bad, and we heard a lot of shooting. We saw some hunters, and it's just really good to know that uh, hunting is alive and well below the Bay City and Muskegon line. Well, unfortunately, due to the opening day weather, this opening day is not going to be as good as I hoped it would be. I'm talking about for everybody else, Zach. How do you rank opening day? I thought it was all right. <laughs> yeah, you thought it was all right. You only get your first year once, and I tell you, that was a great one. But you know, wrapping up our deer season report, a lot of people have questions. They ask me in the field, ask all of us questions about deer hunting regulations. I think we have some of those questions in our mailbag, don't we, Ed? That's right, Fred, and our mailbag contains a lot of questions about uh, regulations. The first one is from Alan Garot of Davison. He writes, do I need a license for trapping on my own property? No, you do not need a trapping license or a small game license if you trap or hunt on the land that you live on. You do have to buy a deer license, though. But this means that your land has to be fenced in, and you must live there permanently. It can't be a vacation home or a summer home. Am I right on that, Bob? Yeah, you're right, Fred. Uh, trapping and small game hunting is completely legal on your own enclosed farmland uh, or land that you live on. But there is an exception in the trapping law, and that is if you trap beaver and otter, you have to have a trapping license in order to do that. But if you stay within enclosed farmlands, small game hunting, and most of your trapping, well, that's uh, free. You really don't need a license for it. Our next question is from Jim Pollock of Taylor. He says, I frequently use spotlights for night photography. I am not a hunter. Is it illegal to shine deer after 11 p.m. for photographic purposes only? The law says it is illegal to use the rays of an artificial light between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. for the purposes of locating wild animals. That's to prevent people from shooting them. But if you're photographing these animals, you've already located them, you're just using the light to illuminate them for photography, you don't have a firearm or a bow with you, it would seem to me that that's within the spirit of the law. But what do the conservation officers say, Bob? Well, I talked to one CO who said he would write a ticket for that, but I just got to think, my best guess is that if that uh, light was used merely to photograph and not to locate a wild animal, that uh, that, that ticket could be beat. That's a question, though, that I think it's going to be up to the courts to decide. 
Here's a sticky question about road hunting. Arnold Haliski from Westland writes, I know road hunting is not legal, but how far off the road is legal? Actually, this is a misconception because road hunting is not illegal. But, of course, it can't be on a super highway or anything like that. But a county road like this is legal to walk if both sides of the road are open to hunting. Now, for example, here, this side of the road, the land over there, is closed to hunting. That means that out to the middle of the road, a hunter cannot walk on this side. But if this side were open to hunting, a hunter could walk on this side of the road or the shoulder. That about sums it up, right, Bob? Well, that's the gist of the law, but uh, a lot of expressways and main highways aren't even open to be walked upon, so uh, you obviously can't hunt from those. And you've got to remember, too, when you're driving, the gun always has to be unloaded and encased or in the trunk. It's never legal to, uh, to carry a loaded gun while you're driving or to shoot from a car. Before I get to my last mailbag question, I want to tell you something that happened to me while I was out scouting around looking for deer and for hunters. In fact, I did see a few deer run across the road in front of me as I was driving. I got out of my car, and as I walked up to the point where they were, had crossed, I saw some white. Uh, and as I got closer, it was moving, and sure enough, it was a deer, evidently a very small one, evidently it hit the fence it was trying to cross over. I called over to some hunters that were just nearby, and you know their reaction was uh, one of you know sorrow for the deer. And as I walked away, I clicked this photo of them. They were standing over, there, over the deer for a good two or three minutes, hoping that it would die, hoping that they wouldn't have to shoot it. And I guess that just shows that, that deer hunting isn't just the kill, but there's a lot of uh, emotional uh, tie between the, the hunter and the white-tailed deer. And we have our last question from Tom Northup of Chelsea. If a hunter is trespassing on land without written permission, doesn't the DNR officer confiscate any weapons and game animals possessed by the trespassing hunter? Only the courts can confiscate personal property. That's the only way it can be done. Now, a law officer can seize property, uh, especially if he's going to need that for evidence. Different states have different laws when it comes to trespass. And I know the Canadian provinces, some of them really crack down. They're tough over in Canada on trespassing and confiscation. But you know, there's no reason to cross over into private land in order to hunt and fish in this state. To prove it, hey, just watch every week because that's where most of the trophies come from in our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Report. Despite the excitement of deer season, you know, we still have anglers out on the streams like Dave Horton, who was fishing last year on November 20th and caught this 16 and a half pound steelhead from Manistee Lake. That's a great fish, but I think this week, most sportsmen really want to see the big deer we found from around the state. What's the biggest deer or the best story you've come across in the UP, Bob? Well, this is an unusual buck here, and uh, not too often you find a lot of women in the woods taking bucks this size. Shirley, you must be an old veteran at this. No, I'm not. No? <laughs> Just first year hunting. First year. First year hunting now, <laughs> and this is your first buck? Yes. Yes, it is. Got a rocking chair buck for your first buck. Now, we put the tape to this buck just a little bit earlier, and it measures from the outside spread, the largest outside spread here is uh, 30, or excuse me, 20 and a half inches. It's an obvious 10 point. I don't think there's any question about that. We won't have to put a ring on it. We won't have to measure those tines. They're all one inch. So it would score totally 30 and a half. That would put you right in the uh, men's category for our big buck awards. Yes, it would. Okay, and, uh, and for the women's category, it's a, it's a score of 24. And it looks to me like you might be a winner. How would you feel being the, uh, being the woman that took the largest uh, rack in the state of Michigan this year? Super. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, you should be smiling because uh, this is a guy who's made history up here in Houghton Lake. This deer is a six point. Huh? Right. And you guys standing around and saying, big deal? You know how many deer this makes with a bow and arrow for Jack? 30 in a row. 30 years in a row. Right. Isn't that something? Right. Yeah. A little round of applause. <laughs> For Jack Whitmer of Holton Lake, what is the secret to success? Oh, the scouting do a lot of looking around, a lot of scouting, and uh, I sneak up on them. Oh, you do? I've never shot one out of a blind. <laughs> Man alive. <laughs> Maybe we ought to be following you around with the camera right. some Right. <laughs> now, another thing, another thing, when you're rifle hunting, what do you use? My muzzle loader. Man, I can't yeah, believe it. You're traveling with a muzzle loader rifle. I tell you, this guy <laughs> deserves to be our Trophy Hunter of the Week, don't you think? I hope so. I mean, I don't know what, what the other fellows reported.
What do you think, Smoke? Oh, I think this is probably next to the best thing that ever happened. You see, Smoke has been here stirring up the stew that uh, I brought up here to deer camp because you always have to have a stew, something going during the day, the steaks the night before opening day. Does it smell pretty good? Well, I guess it does. It's it, you know probably, what's in it? I think there's some, uh, there's probably the deer you shot last year. Yeah. Uh, I smell some tomatoes. There's yeah. a lot, there's a, there's uh, some potato in here. There's, uh, there's at least some onions, and I don't know what else you're going to have to tell me. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to have to go. If you could have been with us back at our Michigan Outdoors cabin last week when Kathy and I put this together, you would have seen exactly what went in it. This is brown, all ready to go. Ready to add the rest of the stuff? Okay, well, I want to show the folks that stew meat is not just pieces of shank and odd pieces with a lot of the connective tissue and fat on it. What we have here in the pan, it's browning right now in a little bit of margarine, is stew meat like this. This is every bit as tender and tasty as loin. The best stuff. It is, but it's hard to get to. These are the scraps right here that I took off of these pieces of shank. Sure, there's little bits of meat on it, but don't toss them into the stew. It's strong tasting. That's the stuff that makes venison taste gamey. Now, you take a piece of shank meat, like I have right here, and I'm cutting it apart, and the muscles separate. What you see in here is called fell, silver skin and fell. This is the strong, bad tasting stuff, and this, the way you get it off is like filleting a fish, uh, skinning a fillet on a fish. Take that and lay it right down onto the table. Run your knife along like that. You see that skin, that silver skin in the fell? Kathy, if people would remove this from the pieces of meat. Oh, definitely. It tastes better. It sure does. See, you don't want to cook that up and eat that you in your stew. You can't chew it. No. <laughs> and you take what's left, like that, and you trim it up. Anyway, you get it so it's trimmed like that, with no fat or connective tissue, and that's going to be great. What else do we add to Southern Michigan deer stew? A regular stew. Two cups of celery. Got onion for good flavor. A whole onion chopped up. Right. Okay. Three potatoes. One okay. green pepper. Two tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes. These, yeah, right. These are better uh, than canned. Let's see, what else do we have? We have some celery. No, the parsley. Parsley. Two tablespoons chopped parsley. They look so much That's going to give it good flavor, too. Two bouillon cubes. Mm -hmm. Some Italian seasoning. Some brown sugar. Okay. That's going to sweeten it up a little bit. How much Italian seasoning? Two tablespoons. Let me guess. We are adding salt and pepper, so that's going to take the place Does that of all of look that. look like about two? Yeah, looks good. Vinegar? One tablespoon. That's going to kind of counteract the brown sugar. And, last but not least, all right. some spaghetti sauce. And you don't normally find spaghetti sauce in a stew recipe. I guess not. Southern Michigan Deer Stew, contributed by Laurie Schoenfield. Okay, we need some water. And some water? Yep, just kind of. The question is, two Kathy, cups. two cups of water, that approximately? Looks good. Looks good. The question is, you think the fellows up at Deer Camp are going to like it? They're going to love it. They are going to love it. You tasted it? It's I excellent. Did. It's delicious. It's no, excellent. I mean, seriously, you don't have to say that because it's on television. No, no. no. It really is. It's really Let me good. taste it first. Yeah. This is real good. It's hot. It's not as hot as I get in Texas, but it's hot. You guys have been, you've been hitting the stew pretty hard. How is yeah, it? Yeah, very good. It's delicious. You know what has in it? You guys are used to Mexican food, but it has uh, Italian sauce in it. Spaghetti sauce. That's, that's the thing. Uh, Mexican food with Italian sauce really makes it come out better. <laughs> it does? <laughs> well, great. No. Special taste. This is called a Southern Michigan deer stew that uh, Lori Schoenfeld uh, sent to us. Good thing for deer camp, eh? Yep. You know, we were going to save some for tomorrow, but you guys clobbered it all right now. Never clobbered lies. it all. And There's nothing left. Never lies. You know one thing, a lot of people... <laughs> you know, deer camp, a lot of people are up relaxing. And this here, I have a serious question. It's from our outdoor quiz. It's in the Club Digest. In fact, our recipe's in the Club Digest. Anybody wants to write in, our recipe's coming up after the show. Here's the quiz. See if any of you know the answer to this. In a national study of firearm accidents in hunting, what percentage involved the use of alcohol? Anybody have any idea? 100%. 100%. You guys think so? No, I, no. I thought it was 73, the last check they made on Well, I know, I know why you guys would think it would be so high. <laughs> no, you know, a lot of hunters and a lot of shooters, a lot of people do use alcohol, you know, in their recreational activities. The answer is, one and a half percent of all firearm hunting accidents were linked to alcohol, which is an incredibly low statistic. But you know, hunters, when we're out hunting, we're safe. 
What do you mean it can't be mine? It has my, it has my name on it. They've had this peg reserved for me all week long so I could hang my buck here. But this is the buck that my son got. I didn't get one this morning. My son, Zach, 16 years old, and I really deserve an assist on it, I think, because we were in the same blind. I woke him up so he could see the deer. No, this is the truth. I woke him up so he could see the deer, and then I got all excited, and he took over from there. But it was great, and I dressed it out, field dressed it. Don't Zach I deserve an assist? Zach didn't field dress it? No, but I, I made him every step of the way. I said, Zach, come here, put your hand under here, and I see what I'm doing. Huh? I, made my, I made my son uh, field dress his. That must have taken three hours. Uh, a little while. <laughs> a little while, I bet. Well, we have it all field dressed. Zach, congratulations. I've congratulated him so often on this. But that's the explanation. No, I didn't get my deer, but I got an assist. But Tuck? How's the buck pole look this year? Excellent, excellent. We've hung uh, 39 deer today. That's a record. That's a record, yeah. Last year it was what, 34, 36? Something like that. No, not that many. Thir 30, 31 last year, the first day. Huh. Well, that's super. Yeah. Here at the buck pole, they're strung up, up and down. Looks like a bunch of happy hunters. Not Congratulations. Really. What do you mean, not really? I didn't get mine. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. Well, anyway, happy hunters for opening day. You guys happy? Oh, yeah. Except I didn't get a buck. Oh, Gripe grumble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> gripe and grumble? Only seen one doe all day today. Oh, gripe and grumble. Got more gripes and grumbles? No, nope. you don't get them, you ain't got to drag them. Well, that's right. So you're happy not getting one. What about you? Yeah, I'm happy. Are you? You got one? No. <laughs> but you had a good day? Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, anyway. Hours out of the ten. You s who did? He did. You slept in no. the blind? No. Huh? <laughs> huh? Come on, turn around. You? How how long did you sleep today out of ten hours? Oh, fifteen minutes. Fifteen? Half, half, half hour, half maybe? Hour. At the most. <laughs> Felt better after it was after you napped. Yeah, you? I did. Yeah. You gonna hunt deer when you get older with your dad? Yep. And and I got a compass. You do. Hey, that's the best thing you can take say in the we, woods with you. Say we won that in the raffle today. Yep. When are you going to take him out deer hunting? I think, How it's, old old. I think it's 14 in Michigan now, but isn't it? But when do you take him out with you in the blind? Oh, we t I take him out bow hunting with me now. Oh, do you? <clears throat> yeah. Are you quiet? How, how'd you get him to be quiet? Get all the talk out of him first. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good trick. <laughs> 